Rebecca morning. It's almost Christmas, y'all. I was gonna try and film this um, in front of my Christmas tree, but I just was not organized today because I just am not organized in general. Sorry, I've not even had my computer ready with my stuff on here for my wrap up. But hello, welcome. My name is Melinda. This is a web of stories. <laughs> it is the 22nd of December. And um, uh, first off, apologies. I have not been responding to comments. I have not even been watching booktube videos this week because I have so much to do still. I'm in the crunch time. I, I think I might just go into a coma after Christmas and catch up on all my sleep. Just wake up only to read <laughs> and watch booktube, of course. But um, yeah, once we get past this, things will get normal, but I'm just in, really in a crunch right now. Um, but I didn't want to stop and do a, an update and, you know, put makeup on so I remembered how to do it because <laughs> I haven't done it in a while. Um, but yeah, so really busy this week. Um, I still, what do I still have to do? I have some cookie dough that I'm going to need to roll out and, and cut out and bake so that my kids and my, my brother-in-law, so my father-in-law and brother-in-law are coming down um, for Christmas. So my brother-in-law and the kids can decorate those. Um, I have a couple other cook batches of cookies I have to make up and then bake. They aren't, they aren't, um, they aren't cut out cookies. I have some gifts to wrap. I kind of shot myself in the foot with this one because I usually get my husband to wrap everything except his gifts. So I wrapped a couple of the kids stuff. Um, but then I said, can you go ahead and do this? He's like, yeah, just take everything up to my office. I'll do it. Well, that was like two days ago and he hasn't done it yet. And I still have gifts of his I have to wrap. So I need to whick with him <laughs> a little bit. Today, my daughter is going to, a, a, I said Halloween, a Christmas party. Um, so we're gonna drop her off and then we're gonna do, go do some shopping for Christmas. So what we usually do is Christmas Eve. So Christmas Eve is on Advent Four Sunday this year, which means there's in the morning, there's the Advent Four Christmas service, every Advent Four service, regular Sunday service. And then the evening is the Christmas Eve service. Now, my feeling is you do one or the other. <laughs> Because that's a lot of church. So my daughter's accolading in the morning. So the plan is we're just going to go to church in the morning. But then my husband's like, well, maybe we'll also go in the evening. So I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. But usually Christmas Eve is pretty low key for us. We do like um, like a finger food dinner. We do Yola Boca Flood. And I will do um, next week. I'm going to do a holiday book, like a little mini book haul. And um, I don't, I mean, I've, my personal Yola Boca Flood was a little bit messed up this year, which I will explain then. But um, I'll show what I gave everybody else for Yola Boca Flood. And um, there's still hope that my husband came through and I gave him a couple book titles just in case. So we'll see. Um, <laughs> I usually don't get books for Christmas. Um, so I'll do a little holiday book haul next week. But we do Yola Boca Flood on Christmas Eve. Then whether or not we go to church, that's still up in the air. I don't know. And then Christmas morning, we do stockings and then we eat breakfast and then we unwrap everything else. And then for the first time in a long time, I'm doing Christmas dinner. And thank you all for your suggestions. We have decided on ham. I was kind of thinking we wouldn't do ham because I thought my one friend who's coming doesn't like ham, but she said she does. And the other one said she doesn't, but she's happy to eat everything else. She just wants mashed potatoes. Um, so I can do mashed potatoes. <laughs> so we're going to do ham and mashed potatoes and green beans. And then my one friend always brings fruit salad, which is all my daughter eats. Um, and then um, I, ha I, I attempted to make fruit cake this year. We'll see how that turns out. I'm actually going to get into that, I think, on Christmas Eve. But then I'll also make a gingerbread cake for Christmas Day. And then we have cookies and fudge and all that up the wazoo. So th that's my plan, really. Um, and then on Monday, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. I'm just <laughs> I, like, I, this, this sponge has got all it's got a hold. It's, it needs to be, needs to ring out and just sleep. But yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, so let me just get to, this is probably going to be, I, I'm going to say this and I'm going to jinx myself, but this is probably going to be a shorter video, but let's get into it. So first of all, last week, I forgot a book that I read that I, I had forgotten to put in my spreadsheet. So, and I didn't realize that till after I did my video. So last week, I also finished Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. Loved it. We'll be reading it every Christmas. Everyone's reading it. I don't need to say anything about it. Claire Keegan is awesome. So beyond that, I finished four books this week, which sounds like a lot, um, considering how busy I am. But um, most of them I've been reading for a while. <laughs> 
So the first one I finished was The Friend by Sigrid Nunez. I had hoped to finish this in time to mail it out to my postal book group before Christmas. Um, I have until December 31st, so it's not, it's not a big deal that I didn't because I am not going to the post office again until after Christmas. <laughs> I went once. It was horrendous. So this book. I knew going in, it was kind of plotless. I'm, I'm generally okay with that, with sort of like, you know, sort of plotless thought books. Um, and this book started out, like, I like the writing. I kind of like, you know, was into what the person was saying, but it slowly became more and more navel gazy. And at one point I just wanted to throw the book across the room, which I would have had I owned it, but this was someone else's book. And, and say, okay, I got it. You have an MFA. Um, that's what this book felt like. I ended up, I think, giving it a C plus. Um, not sure I'd recommend it. And as for whether the dog dies at the end, I honestly can't answer that question. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. If you say, oh, there's a dog. Does the dog die in the end? Because I asked that question. I read this book. I can't answer it. Not because I'm withholding anything. I just absolutely cannot answer it. <laughs> because Oh. Um, so yeah, that was The Friend by Sigrid Nunez. Will I read more from Sigrid Nunez? Possibly. I, I don't know. As I said, the prose was nice, um, but this just got really navel gazy and MFA-ish. And then finally, this is one that I have been reading for a long time. Never Whistle at Night. Loved this story collection. So this is an anthology of an indigenous dark fiction anthology. So horror. Um, by indigenous authors, many of whom are very well known. There are some that have never been published. This is the first time they've been published. So all that is pretty awesome. I think there was one story in here where I was like, what? But other than that, it was Brandon Hobson's, by the way. Um, and I think I've tried to read Brandon Hobson. I had kind of the same feeling with this book, if I remember correctly. So I'm thinking of, I can't remember. Um, but loved this collection. Highly, highly recommend this. Um, for short story, if you like short stories, if you want to dip into indigenous authors and you don't know where to start, I think I was kind of looking at this. I mean, it does not have Louise Erdrich in it, but I think beyond, or Joy Harjo, beyond those two, it has like pretty much all the ones you're going to hear, plus some other ones. Um, let me make sure it doesn't have Joy Harjo in it, now that I've said that. <laughs> I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. So um, this would be a great place to kind of dip in, even if you were like, okay, I'm just going to read, like, I want, I'm interested in... Let's just randomly choose an author that you might have heard of that you've not read. Okay, now I can't get to it because my thumbs. Uh, Sherry Dimley. You just go find Sherry Dimley's story, read it, and see what you think of it. Fabulous. Great, great story collection. Then I finished my only audiobook for this month, and this is part of Remember December, and that is... The Mysterious Affair of Styles. Yes, I have it in print. This was my read a book in a different format. And I am all about these audiobooks narrated by Hugh Frazier. Hugh Frazier is a fantastic narrator. I can't really talk about the story because, you know, I've already read it. I've already talked about that. Um, I knew it was going to happen, but it was still a really fun experience listening to this. So, if you've never done Agatha Christie or actually want to read Agatha Christie, there are lots of audio adaptations of Agatha Christie novels, um, audiobook versions, look for, and at least the Perot ones. I think all of the Perot ones have been done by Hugh Frazier, but at least the early ones have. The ones that have Hastings have. I need to check and see what the ones not done by Hastings have, but definitely that is a good option. And then finally, um, I finished The Berry Pickers by Amanda Peters. So this was a book that I, I actually hadn't planned to read on this year because my hold list, when I put it on hold on Libby, said I had a super long wait. And then what happened was the library purchased more copies and I didn't know that. So all of a sudden it showed up in Libby. So I'm like, okay, well, I have time to read it. Um, I really, this was a, I went in. So, okay. First of all, for some reason I had it in my mind that this was a mystery. It's not a mystery. It is, there's no mystery in it. Um, there's nothing mysterious in it. It's not a mystery. I did know that it was indigenous. Um, people were speaking really highly of it. So I was a little worried that my expectations were too high going into it. Now, this is a debut novel. There were a couple places where I felt like I had to suspend my disbelief because I was like, really, would that really happen? But I cried at the end of this book. And you know, that right up there puts it up to like an A plus. <laughs> I mean, not a completely perfect book. There were, I mean, it's, it is a debut novel from a author who has a very bright future. 
So a couple places we are like, hmm, does that really work? But other than that, fantastic novel. Um, if you like kind of sad, pull at your heartstrings kind of books, it's great. Loved it. And that is um, The Berry Pickers by Amanda Peters. Okay, so now as for what I'm currently reading. So this is the time of year where I start winding things down because I want to be done with everything before January 1st. I want to start 2024 with a fresh slate. Um, so I only have four books going, <laughs> which is like a record for me. Um, the first is The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett. Um, this should be a really quick read because it's, if you've read The Appeal, it's the same group of people. There's like a dead Santa Claus or something. I don't know. Dead Santa. Who knows? But it's definitely for people who've read The Appeal. I would say don't try this if you haven't read The Appeal, but read The Appeal because it's awesome. Um, I just started it last night. I was really tired when I went to bed, so I didn't get very far into it. So I can't really say anything about it, but, um, hoping to actually finish it before Christmas. <laughs> that would be really nice. So I have The Christmas Appeal. The other book I have in print is another one of my Remember Decembers and also um, for my library book club for January. And that is The Seed Keeper by Diane Wilson. <laughs> you can see how far I am by where the tabs stop. <laughs> I'm really loving this book. I'm loving it more than the first time I read it. I am catching so many more things in it. And... Um, this book almost went to a little free library and then it got chosen by my uh, library book club. So I pulled it out of the bag and I put it back on my shelf and I'm so glad I did because I am actually loving this more the second time. Um, it's a great book to read like, like late winter because it makes you want a garden. So you read it and then you're ready to plant your garden. <laughs> I really love it. Diane Wilson is an indigenous author from the... What, what tribe is she from? I know she's registered with Rosebud, but I don't think, let's see, where is it in here? Ah, she's Dakota. I should know that. She's Dakota. Uh, but it does say she is uh, enrolled at the Rosebud Reservation, which I don't think is Dakota. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, someone who knows more, tell me. Um, but yeah, so indigenous author, fabulous book, loved it, loving it. And then on e-reader. I am still working on Valette. Man, that book is weird. I think I said in my discord at some point this week, like this is the book that I'm reading that I don't remember. Like I know I've read, but I don't remember it. It's part of Remember December. I really don't remember it, but I have come to the conclusion it's not because I forgot. It's because I like blocked it out of my memory. <laughs> it is weird. Weird, 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 weird. And I'm kind of like more just like reading it out of curiosity at this point. It is definitely a step down from Jane Eyre. Definitely. Um, I went on a rant last week with some spoilers. So we're going to put some spoilers right here to kind of catch you up. If you care, you can skip ahead. I don't know why you would care, but I'm being a good person. I'll say spoiler. I'll do time stamps and all that. So spoilers for lead. So as I said, I knew what happened. The weird, creepy kid from the beginning that was like, you know, felt like she was like this big, came back. She's now 17, but she still feels like she's this big. And apparently... Like, I think Lucy's like in for the other, the, the guy who was the godmother's son. I don't know. There's love triangle thing going up, but you know it's not going to work. And so it's, it's a lot of weird stuff. And it's gotten to the point. So it's kind of set. I was like, is it set in France or is it set in Belgium? Where is it set? Well, it's set in kind of a, its own imaginary country, I guess. I don't know. Because now they have like these dukes. Oh, the, the, the weird girl comes back who's now 17 and she's. Like now a, she's like a duchess now. Like what? <laughs> what? What is going on with this? Oh, and Lucy is haunted by a nun that keeps showing up. I don't know. She's terrified of this nun, that this ghost nun, I guess. I don't know what is going on with this book. <laughs> wow. Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts on, uh, it's not a lot, not a spoilers. Cause I'm just like, huh? Right. They went to a ball in this and there's a lot of description about the ball and Lucy going, eh. oh, and there's this other character named who I thought was Genevra. And then I actually slowed down and read her name and it's Genevra. And she's really annoying. She said, but she's also the weird, the weird kid's cousin. And they're kind of like, um, Genevra doesn't like the weird kid, but the weird kid is perfect in every way. Oh, what's going on? I, I, I'm like, I don't actually care about any of these characters. <laughs> I'm just like, 
what is going on in this book? Um, I think I know how it's going to end up and who Lucy's going to end up with because she's going to end up with someone. And I think I know who she's going to end up with. Um, but I'm going to withhold just in case I'm wrong. So, end of spoilers. That's where I am with Valette. Okay, and then... Uh, I will let you know, I said before that I'm only going to bring up, you know, the short story collections when I finish them, but uh, just to let you know, I just have one short story collection going and I'm almost done with it. And that is The Yellow Wallpaper and Other Stories by Charlotte Perkins Gilman will easily be done by next week. I think I have three stories left. Um, so all this comes down to what happens when I'm done with everything. Like what if there's more year left at the end of the books? That is where all the Kindle singles that I collect show up. That's when I start reading these these short stories that that like Amazon puts out on their Kindle by well-known authors. I know I have one by Jennifer Weiner waiting. Um, I have one by, I can't pronounce her name, but she wrote um, my, sis, my sister's a serial killer, my serial killer sister, whatever that one is. She has one, um, but I have a bunch of those, like a bunch of those. So I'll just kind of like read those until 2023 is done and I can start fresh in 2024. So I'm going to let you go now. I have one video that I'm going to film now for next week because I know I'm not going to have any time now between now and then to do it. So uh, I hope you all, if you celebrate Christmas, have a very wonderful holiday. Um, and if not, just have a really wonderful weekend. Uh, you know, I hope things go very well for you. I hope you are all safe and healthy and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.